Victoria's got many islands. Beveridge Island in the north of Victoria was the site of a famous court dispute over whether it counts as part of Victoria or New South Wales. Cleft Island, otherwise known as Skull Rock off Wilson's Prom, has had less people walk on it than the surface of the moon. Boundary Islet accidentally became the site of the land border between Victoria and Tasmania due to an inconvenient surveying mistake. French Island, surprisingly and pleasingly undeveloped considering its proximity to Melbourne and will be the subject of a future video. Middle Island could be reached by wading from the beach, but it's a closed conservation area, so you can't. Phillip Island's an extremely popular destination for tourists, with penguins and a Grand Prix circuit, among other things. And those are just some of them. But there's one island that's right there in the inner city. Located on the Yarra River between Richmond and South Yarra, it's called Herring Island. And despite its proximity to the city, few have heard of it and fewer have been there. It's actually an artificial island, originally a peninsula connecting to the north, but with a channel carved out to increase the flow of the Yarra, it was cut off from the mainland. So how do we get there? It's actually surprisingly easy. On weekends and public holidays from January to the end of the Easter long weekend, Parks Vic run a free punt service from Como Landing in South Yarra over to the island. Alternatively, if you have your own boat, kayak or paddleboard, you can make your own way over. Swimming, however, is not permitted as it's south of Johnston Street in Abbotsford, the Yarra's danger zone. So what's on it? In the 1950s to the 1970s, the Scouts occupied the island and built a hall on it. In 1994, it became a public park, and in 1997, Herring Island became an environmental sculpture park. Also, as it's a special event this week, the art gallery is open. Here on the island, we have a hill, a river, two rocks and a presence. John Davis's tribute to the island's source. You know it's a small island when it all fits on screen. After that, we have Can by Andy Goldsworthy, set in the only natural valley on the island, constructed from Castlemaine Slate. Steerage, over here by Jill Peck, meant to represent the inside of a boat and provide a resting place for contemplation. Falling Fence by John Gollings and Samantha Slicer, the latest addition to the sculpture park. Scaled Stem by Robert Bridgewater, symbolic of a lot of things. Ramp by Robert Jacks relates the tranquil environment of the island to the freeway and urban development just across the river. Now this is the art gallery. We take a look around inside, but I'm not going to give you high definition footage of all the artists work. You'll have to go there and buy it yourself. Back over to the other side for Stone House, also by Andy Goldsworthy. Made from Dunkeld sandstone, emphasizing the sense of discovery and concealment of the island by being hidden in the hillside. And Tanderum by Ellen Jose, to represent the Aboriginal Tanderum ceremony in an artwork. Lastly, we take a quick detour to see Audience by Julie Collins, created entirely of rock removed to dig the nearby freeway tunnel, intended to welcome visitors to the island. Then, it's a quick punt ride across the river and a walk home. It's a very good little day trip to an island few have heard of, right here in Melbourne. If you like what you've seen here, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for many more adventures to come.